Hey y'all, this is Culture Soup, where tech, culture, and business collide. It's a podcast that spoons up everything hot from social media. I'm your host, L. Michelle Smith, and each episode, we bring you some of the most notable and not yet notable thought leaders in tech, business, and culture. It's time for part two of the therapy we need right now with licensed social worker and trauma therapist, my soror of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and girlfriend of more than 20 years, Tina Robertson. We talked about in the last episode what it is we're feeling right now in the midst of this storm. It's grief. And it's because we have experienced so many losses, whether it's death or expectations or plans that we had and we've got to mourn them all. In the meantime, we have to be careful about who we listen to online. So many of them are not even qualified or credentialed, let alone licensed, while some of them could be. But you gotta be careful of these internet psychologists. I see a lot of it on TikTok. You may see it on Facebook and Instagram too. And you know what? It made us think about the topic of relationships and all of these terms that get thrown around about people who aren't quite ready for prime time. Yeah, we're about to talk about relationship coaches. Hold on to your hats. It's about to get real. Let's get it. Well, and then the labeling, you know, I'm concerned about the labeling. Um, I have to say this and, and I'm, I'm okay if this goes viral um, because I'm, I'm okay to stand up to the American Psychiatric Association, mm-hmm. but the DSM. So a lot of therapists, don't take insurance because you have to submit a diagnosis in order to be get paid, okay. um, reimbursed rather. Mm-hmm. So, um, so a lot of therapists do private pay for that reason because they don't want to label clients. A lot of things that mm-hmm. um, that our clients come in and they're dealing with. So, let's say I have a client who's coming in and they're dealing with with grief because they've been in the pandemic for a couple of years, and or they may have had some things that that came to surface because these other losses brought that up for them. Mm -hmm. So my client might be dealing with some grief and trauma, but once we work through some strategies and we address, we name it so we can tame it, right? So we do some of that that work to unveil what it is and we go toward that. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a behavioral clinical diagnosis that's needed. And what's interesting is that the DSM-5 has added a diagnosis for prolonged grief. Hmm. And so there's been a little controversy about it. I think the New York Times had an article out about it this past weekend. And so I was talking about it with a colleague at work today. But, you know, so we definitely want to make sure that we are addressing complicated grief. And that's grief that persists for a long time. And that person right. they just stuck and they can't move forward. So that's one thing. But then to begin to say they have prolonged grief disorder. Hmm. That's a different thing when you start labeling. Mm-hmm. Well, might just be something that that person needs a few extra strategies, a little bit more time to process through. They may need some specific modalities Mm -hmm. to work through it. But do we need to label and pathologize everything? And so that's where I think some of this rub too is um, in our culture. It's, It's popular to have a diagnosis and a label. Oh, yeah. it used to be used to be stigmatizing. Now it's like, no, it's good. Girl, you bipolar. Oh, what? You know, and so yeah. it's almost flipped. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, It's really crazy. And I also think that we have this need as humans, you calling it labeling, but I call it branding because, <laughs> you know, when it, let's talk about relationships. We've seen every behavior called something and they make mm-hmm. it seem like it's the new, new. When mm-hmm. ghosting has been around since the dawn of time, <laughs> people have been walking out on folks for years. You know, now it's, 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 it's on your device. It's ghosting. Yeah. 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 This isn't new. Bread, breadcrumbing is not new, <laughs> but we have to, we have to label, we have to name everything. We have to brand it. And suddenly it takes on this life all its own and it's viral. Yeah. Well, and so you raise a point that gets to something else. And I don't know if this is a segue or not, or we'll come back mm-hmm. to whatever we we're going to do, but uh, relationship stuff. Mm-hmm. So all of the relationship experts, which I was going now. So, and then they got to be a relationship expert because of, tell me again, Girl, don't even high, value woman, <laughs> high 
high value woman, then that means there's a low value woman. And so it's oh all my about goodness. going. So you do know in relationships, you're going to run into a person who may have experienced, you know, this avoiding attachment. It doesn't mean that they're not a person you don't date or that you don't spend time with. You understand what your differences are. Just like you had back they in the 60s. Like, like, <laughs> they reduce it down to like your zodiac sign. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm a Virgo and I'm avoiding attachment. I mean, you know, and you know, and they believe everything that is being said about that attachment style. And they almost manifested themselves because they just decided to walk in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing when you start seeing these categories and that's why you really have to do these things in a safe environment um, and have someone to talk through because the, the, the interesting thing about the attachment styles is while they have like four different patterns, most of us have um, potentially a little bit of all of those, depending on the situation we're in, uh, what we may have experienced. So it's not just like a one size fits all for your experience. Right. Um, and so that's why you have to really take that information and say, hey, I need to sit with my therapist or I need to sit with a coach who actually has some understanding of this and really walk through this in a way that allows me to show up in a healthy space where I'm not just saying, I'm avoidant, which means I'm going to have trouble with um, an ambivalent. We're going to have, tr we're people that live on a planet Everybody's that gonna have trouble. are imperfect. So that's not the basis of your relationship. It really is, mm -hmm. is understanding what your differences are, what your triggers are, understanding some patterns that you have, but it's not living and dying by those. Yeah. Well, and you know what? I think you just graduated to a two-part episode. So this is great. If you have a few more <laughs> minutes, I want to ask you about something. Yeah, How sure. can people um, ascertain who is leg legitimate when it comes to some of these? You see relation coaches, even the some of the, I don't even want to call them therapists. They're just people that show up and start talking about these issues yeah. and some of these labels that we're talking about. Yeah, so I will tell you this. Um, if we're talking about specifically around relationship coaches, I personally don't listen to them. Um, I, but I don't. And I, you know, I have one that I think is probably closest to legit, but mm -hmm. because he has to live in the space and compete, yeah. um, you know, there's some things that he has to say and do that keep him at the top of the game. Yeah. Quite frankly, really, honestly, I, I would say to somebody, if they're looking for relationship advice, I would say really, you know, who are your mentors? Who are the yes. people who are the closest to you in life that understand you, that know your patterns, your quirk, your bents, that can look from the outside in and lovingly help you process through some of those things? Because everybody can't afford a therapist. I get it. Yeah. Um, but I steer away from relationship coaches because every I'm single with you. is unique. <laughs> I'm with it's you. Unique. Oh, my God. I don't. I just, I, I just, oh, cut oh my goodness. <laughs> I have one that I listen to on TikTok. And she actually does have, she's certified trauma professional and she applies that and you can see that she's really legit, but she's also entertainment. She's got some entertainment value yeah, um, yeah. and it's a white lady and she's, she's entertaining, but the, she's the one that seems to have the most sense, mm -hmm. but you can really get sucked into the rabbit hole on some yeah. of the stuff. And I think the ones that really annoy me are the men that only have advice for women. Well, yeah. so then I've diagnosed them as they still got mama issues. Yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other that's a whole other show. You already know. The whole whole other show. Show. <laughs> you think about it really, like even from my own my own um you know, just I don't have a dating life um yet. I mean, who knows what can happen, right? Yeah. But I, I don't I don't need a relationship coach to help me understand more about myself. They're, they are wherever they are, I'm here. Yeah. Um, and so to be able to say that there is a cookie cutter approach to, well, if they do that, this, or they do that, or if they text you, don't text back right away, girl, give them some time and some space and, and make sure they chase you. And I'm like, but you're teaching, <laughs> that you're not being avoided. <laughs> you're that's, that's not even coaching. By the definition of ethical way that you are supposed to get trained to coach, coaing oh, is you want to do it ethically, right. 
it's all questions. So the advice giving people, if Absolutely. you want to know who's legit or not, if they're giving advice in yes. your session, now I understand, yes. and I do it too. I give advice on my social media, but yeah. when you're in a session with me, yes. I'm not giving you advice. That's not coaching. Because yeah. it's your so life. one real way to figure out who's who. Yeah, now that, that, is, that is important. Um, do they ask questions? Also, another way to differentiate the, would we say real versus the fake? <laughs> How is their language? Is it abusive? Yeah. Does it does it appear to be, as you said, is it one sided? Mm -hmm. um, do you feel when you finish listening, do you feel in some sense a little insulted or do you feel like you're diminished or shamed or less than? That's a sign that this is not somebody that you want to be listening to. And, 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 and not just from a relationship standpoint, but just anyone in particular. Okay. If, you're, if you're trying to access care, you should not feel like that you're being shamed. Um, or that you can't speak up. You shouldn't feel like you are uh, in a mini abusive situation. Like, I feel like I generally feel, can I say this to this therapist and feel safe or to this coach or um, to this influencer? Because <laughs> that's what yeah. it is. But, you know, I really do submit to the fact that, um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of women in particular, because I talk to more women about relationships than I do right now for men in the therapeutic process. But I feel like we're passing up opportunities, not just to grow in who we are by engaging in a relationship that we have already deemed because we, a relationship coach told us, oh, they did these two things, so they're out. Oh, wow. We're, we're and, minimizing our own. And we're them too. <laughs> right. So you should be telling you that. <laughs> It's like, when will you ever grow if you don't engage with someone who is not exactly like you? If yeah. they if they stretch you, if there's conflict, it's supposed to be. You're two different people. So again, we have to really think about, am I bypassing a potential opportunity to be with someone? Because if that's your goal, but you're striking everybody because you're hearing this relationship advice, well, they didn't treat me like I was a high value woman or they didn't treat me like I was the prize. <laughs> Well, you're both the prize if you get together, right? So you know, I love. Love. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not at the fair. You're not trying to win me and yeah. pull me down off the, you know, so there are all of these different messaging and narratives that are out there. And I'm seeing, you know, so many women just saying, hey, no, he did this. And so I let him go. And I'm thinking that was the first time. And then, then you were done, yeah. you know? Um, well, yeah. and you know what? I can make a really good, analogy or a parallel to how people are deciding to stay in the position where they are at work, just the relationship with them, them and their careers. Right. Mm -hmm. And so often many of these executives don't know who they are mm -hmm. and they have not mapped out, written down what their values are yeah. and they don't understand their very own values. And if you are loosey goosey on those things, mm -hmm. anybody can walk up and offer you anything or mm -hmm. you're going to walk around mimicking people. Mm -hmm. And this is what these dating relationship coaches and even wow. some business coaches and some others are banking on. Yeah. <laughs> that you have yeah. not thought these things through yeah. so that you look like some, some giant sage. They yeah. can take your money. Well, and that's why I think that's one of the things I talk about, too, in therapeutic work, and especially early on, is what are your anchors? Mm -hmm. What what are your pillars? What anchors you to when, this, when the winds and the rains blow? What do you know, like you know, like you know, that you live by fine Faith, family, family and freedom? freedom for that's me. it. And if that's, that's all, it, that's all. North Star. Gets it. Yeah. So if you're if, if if your value is freedom, but then you're feeling bound by this narrative, there you go. Certain thing, then you already know you check it against your pillar, your foundation. Yes. And that's that's wind. Mm -hmm. So if you toss it, it's like, OK, but it's on the foundation. Now I know I can move forward and I can look for that person, that therapist, that coach, that space where I feel more free. I'll take you even further. You can coach yourself <laughs> if you have those, right? Because yeah. you're going to be asking these questions. Does yeah. it align mm -hmm. with my value, which is X, Y, and Z? And if the yeah. answer is no, maybe you need to check that out a little bit longer. Or maybe that is your indication to cut it off. But yeah. that's your time. Yeah. And one of the other things that I said, and I, I posted this not long ago on, on my IG account, 
you shouldn't take just anything, Mm-mm. but you are going to have to take some things. Mm-hmm. And you need mm-hmm. to pray about discernment to know what that is. Because, mm-hmm. you know, again, if you're if you're rolling with a lot of these relationship coaches, you deucing up at the first sign of normal human behavior. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're going to have to take some things if you're going to be in a relationship. You don't take everything. And that's where yeah. you need to have those anchors and those values that you talked about to be your fine line to say, yeah, this one right here, this one is crossed over. And so it's time to go. But yeah. I mean, we've got, we have a lot of fragility. Mm-hmm. I do see that a, a lot of emotional fragility. Um, and it's, you know, this easy to move, quick to turn it in and pack it up and go home. And so we got to have some stick to itiveness and some perseverance. And I, I I wonder sometime if that's not showing itself generationally. And I talk through, you know, with my clients about that. But I will say, but on the other side, you know, we had our parents' generation that they just like they stayed until well see and nobody was swiping <laughs> in their generation. And this this whole swiping thing gets yeah. us into this idea that there is well, first of all, if you have a scarcity mindset, it really is going to screw you up because you're going to see that it's it looks plentiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're, you're going to end up thinking that if this doesn't work, I'm just going to swipe some more. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. And then you realize when you keep swiping, I should have let me swipe the other way. Stay, okay, stay on number one or two. Yeah. Well, Tina, this has been wonderful. I want the people to know a little bit more about how you got into this line of work? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'll give you the real short version because that other one is another show for you. But, <laughs> you know, over time, I think, you know, once I got into the, the field of social work, because I've worked in corporate for a while, my mm-hmm. original goal, I don't know if I told you this, when I went to college, I was an English poli sci major. I knew um, you were an English major. I knew and that. I wanted to be a criminal attorney. I and so, that. yeah, yeah. And so, Nothing um, shot me though. Because a lot of good communicators, I'm one of them. When I got out of college, I considered law school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my first dream. And I enrolled in law school, got accepted. I took my LSAT and all that. And then right after college, I was like, I'm just tired. Like, I want to take a break. So I worked for a little bit at home in Indy, where I was from. Mm -hmm. And then I moved to, to Houston and I started working for the criminal courts for Harris County. I worked between that and the county jail and this jail. And very quickly, I knew, no. This is not it. Um, And so then, of course, you know, I worked in corporate and state farm for a while, but I was volunteering a lot then and working in ministry at my church. And that really led me to, I think, what was foundationally in me over time was for me to to make the leap into social work. But I did community outreach for a lot in my social work career early on. And then you and I were, Mm -hmm. you know, serving together in a lot of spots. You were on the boards that I was working at in leadership. But what really really, I think, launched me and propelled me into the therapeutic work was, Shell, what I started seeing was so much systemic challenge, systemic Mm -hmm. racism, Mm -hmm. so much systemic entrenchment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, working in community service and community outreach, you're working on those systems. So you're doing it from this like kind of top down. Then there's this bottom up that's suffering. And so I began to see people who just felt stuck. And Mm. I thought, I've got to jump in here because people need something that's going to anchor them within this system that's so entrenched. And what if the system doesn't change? Then what do they do to Ah, make it within the system? That's the question right there. Yeah. If it doesn't change, what will you do anyway? What do you do anyway? And how do you live your best life? How do you live at the best of your emotional and mental capacity and wellness? And so really that was... That was my impetus for getting into the clinical work. In addition to, I just wanted to have the highest practice designation in my field, but that's what drew me. It's like this system stuff is, it's, it's, it's stuck, right? Yeah. And so how do I live in it and how can I have freedom? Cause you know, that's my, my platform is mm-hmm. how do you get freed up in the midst of something that won't let you be free? Right. Now, wasn't that a good one? Thank you, Tina Robertson, for coming on for this two-parter on a topic that's very, very important, and that is mental health and wellness. You can catch her podcast, Freed Up, everywhere good podcasts are heard and streamed. It is everything at the intersection of faith and mental wellness. 
you know what? We'll be back in another two weeks and I'm going to have a children's book author and also the woman in charge of the Ricky Smiley Show. Coming up next on the Culture Soup Podcast. Hi, this is Kim Nelson Ingram. I'm the author of the children's book, You Can Be Anything, and I'm the executive producer of the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. I'm so excited to be here on the Culture Soup Podcast. I can't wait for you to meet her. Find us online at theculturesoup.com, on Instagram and Twitter at The Culture Soup, and on Facebook at The Culture Soup Podcast. Until next time. The Culture Soup Podcast is a production of No Size Communication, LLC. The Culture Soup Podcast is a registered trademark of No Silos Communications, LLC.